we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! Why are you in right? After a judge acquitted a former St. Louis police officer of first-degree murder for a 2011 shooting, protesters marched to St. Louis's City Hall and pledged to disrupt the city's economy. We got to use our economic power to sanction the constant wrong that's being perpetrated upon our people. Because of those demonstrations, businesses in St. Louis closed early, concerts were canceled, and a low humming commercial district became a protest site. Economic disruption has been a, a tool of social movement protesters uh, since the you know, late 19th century into the early 20th century. It's a great way to spread the message that, hey, something really unsavory is happening here. Northwestern political science professor Alvin Tillery explained the economic disruptions seen in St. Louis over policing are reminiscent of those carried out during the civil rights movement. The famous Montgomery bus boycott of 1955 uh, was a way that, uh, you know, uh, Miss Rosa Parks and Dr. King uh, and the other leaders in that city were able to win concessions uh, about uh, desegregating buses by simply boycotting the bus lines. That's a pretty clear example of how economic disruption can work. A year after the Montgomery bus boycott began, a Supreme Court ruling paved the way for the desegregation of buses in Alabama. More recently, protesters in Chicago reportedly caused some stores along Michigan Avenue to lose out on 50% of sales during Black Friday demonstrations in 2015. This, this was in response to the dashcam video of then Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke shooting and killing 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. In St. Louis, there are already signs of how protests could further disrupt the city's economy. Ongoing demonstrations could affect St. Louis's bid to become Amazon's second headquarters, a loss that would deny the city 50,000 more jobs. But what's difficult about economic disruption, according to Tillery, is turning strategy into tangible results. To actually have police reform, you need to marry the economic protest with, with political reform. And those are political reforms that would make local politicians battle with police unions and actually hold the police accountable. It was really surprising because we thought, well, maybe some of the people would continue to ride the bus. But after all, they had been mistreated and been mistreated in so many different ways until I guess they were tired. Persistence is something that has made economic disruption successful in the past. Sustained boycotts in Montgomery, Alabama and Greensboro, North Carolina led to the desegregation of buses and lunch counters, respectively. We gonna hit them economically. While the fight for change in St. Louis is different from fights to desegregate in the South, leaders there say they have no intention of letting up. We are going to push an, uh, a very powerful and prayerfully successful call for our people, not just here in St. Louis, but throughout the state of Missouri and this country, not to be spending money over the holiday season, hit them in the pocket.